Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Hadi Rangin, a member of IT Accessibility Team. And I would like to welcome you to our monthly webinar series. Today, we will be discussing uh, how we can utilize or use a screen reader as a potential checking or testing tool. Okay, let me tell you what we will be discussing today. First, we will be talking a little bit about the difference between technical and, and functional accessibility. Then we talk a little bit about what and how we test it and what the screen reader are available, how a screen reader works, and then uh, some common features that we look for usually for when we are testing. And then, then later we dive into a kind of a live demo. Uh, and finally, we have time to work questions and answer. But good luck. I, am, I usually go over time. <laughs> Technical accessibility. I would like to that we, for just at the beginning, we understand the difference between functional and and, uh, and technical accessibility. This is a big difference. They have a big difference. When we talk about technical accessibility, we usually focus on accessibility of an uh, a specific item by itself. For example, we check that if a button or a form control in general uh, has been coded according to the recommended standard or best practices. So this ensures that uh, the assistive technology uh, have proper access to the button uh, as needed. Note that in this method, we are checking the element by itself and it does not give you any, us any holistic view of, about the overall accessibility of the uh, page or the process uh, that we are uh, testing for. In the functional uh, accessibility uh, testing, we focus more on overall accessibility of the uh, process. Examples that I have considered, you go to Google, or Gmail and you want to send an, an email. So we check, we consider uh, the entire process of finding the uh, compose button, uh, being able to, uh, to navigate to it, uh, trigger it, and then uh, uh, go through the, all the uh, component or the fields, uh, compose your email, run this spell check, and then uh, send the message and then get the confirmation <laughs> uh, uh, notice that you have successfully sent the message. So in this, pro we, we, when we do the testing like this, we call that functional accessibility because we want to check the entire business process uh, as a whole. And as you see that for each step, we need to make sure that uh, all the elements that we are interacting with, uh, uh, interacting with are accessible and then the, we can get to the next step. And of course, this is the uh, right way to do it because you that way you get a holistic view of overall accessibility of the page or, or of the process. So in, in to summarize it, so for the functional accessibility, we need the technical accessibility. Uh, yeah, that, uh, I think that, that is a short message. So accessible techniques are required, um, but uh, but you need both aspect of the uh, accessibility to make sure that the uh, to make sure the application that you are dealing with are or is accessible. So we are talking about accessibility, I mean, how we can use the screen reader for that, but I am very, very skeptic to recommend uh, hey, developers go ahead and start with the screen reader testing because the screen reader program are super complex. And then it is not, uh, uh, I do not recommend that, uh, the, you know, that people go and just start testing with the screen reader because you might get a lot of 
uh, incorrect result because uh, you do not know how to utilize the screen reader um, or how the, you know are not familiar with our hundreds of functions that they offer. So, but before you test, you need to understand the basics of a coding practices. So you need to know that, for example, for a button, what element, what what features, you know, uh, you are looking for, what behavior you are looking for, and all of them uh, are are, are uh, available through the um, ARIA best practices or uh, HTML best practices that you can go and read. Uh, and then see that, you know, what, for example, a button should behave on what features it should have. And then again, when we are testing, we do not want just focus on technical accessibility, we want to focus more on functional accessibility. And then frequently we see that uh, sometimes, you know, they, they uh, uh, confuse accessibility with their personal preferences. Yeah, there are situations that we have to choose or we don't have a strong opinion, but please be careful that you do not impose your personal preferences and set it as accessibility uh, behavior or feature. Other thing that you need to test that, so again, you can use, there are uh, numerous accessibility testing tools that you can use and to get some idea about the technical accessibility problems. And then you can utilize them and you can utilize them and get a good overview, a good uh, understanding about the technical issues. And I need to emphasize that the screen reader can partially help you to uh, check for some accessibility problems. And then, uh, then one thing that I want to mention that, you know, that you probably see that in some application, they tell you, oh, if you are a keyboard user, then you have to go a significantly more complex process or through the different process to do it. Or if you are a screen reader user, uh, call us or do this or that, you know, we call all these uh, things as a bandage or workaround solution. So I just wanted to emphasize that workaround solutions are not accessibility solutions. And when you are testing for accessibility, you run a, to a lot of issues and make sure that you do not get lost into it. So I see that sometimes, you know, the people are focusing on just a fun size are not consistent or fun is it's too small, too big, uh, which is, which is, there are completely valid issues. But uh, when you are doing that, make sure that you get on the bigger and then uh, item or more impactful items. Hey, uh, Hadi. Yes, sir. Your uh, Zoom window has uh, made its way to the top of your slides. It's gone? Not yet. There we go. Is it good? Is it okay now? The, the Zoom toolbar is still visible, but the Zoom window Zoom. is gone now. Yeah. Now the Zoom window is there. If you, if you like, I can request control and make that go away every once in a while. <laughs> Please do it, yeah. Okay. I'm actually not sure how to make the toolbar go away. Hadi has a keyboard shortcut. That was working uh, earlier. Which I did that, but it seems it didn't work. It, it did close it. Oh. It did open and close it, but then the other window keeps popping up. It's not, uh, the toolbar is not too great of a obstruction. Uh, we can still see your slides. Sorry guys for inconvenience. Thank you. There. Okay. So when you're at your computer, make it so you have still control. Make sure that you don't screw my window. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, so, what we are testing when we uh, consider you bring a project for us for accessibility testing, we usually the first thing that we do that we uh, perform is a consistency. 
throughout the application. So we check for the visual consistency, visual functional consistency, meaning that we make sure that the same feature or similar features are implemented in the same way. For example, if you asking in one page for I'm just let's, let's make up you know, uh, 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 gender information. If you use in one place a you know, combo box, uh, and then in different page, you use a radio group. Um, so we consider as an inconsistency. And we would love, you know, within the application framework, you use the same uh, uh, consistency. Proper user elements. So you will be surprised how many times we run into the uh, applications that they, people are not using the right uh, element for the thing that they want to, 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 to do that. The comma uh, to um, uh, 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 do. Um, the common issue that we run into that is, you know, the use of links versus button. Um, or radio group versus checkboxes. And then, uh, so because each of them, they have different meaning. And then uh, if it is not implemented properly, you just cause confusion. Keyboard, keyboard operability, we want to make sure that you can tap to all the focusable elements and you can perform all the uh, applicable functions with keyboard, just keyboard. And then and remember, when you are going through the keyboard testing, you want to make sure that you never get lost. So the focus indicator should be always visible. So do not blame your eyes or, you know, or age uh, if, if you cannot follow that. Logical tab order, it means that when you're pressing tab key, it should go in the logical uh, presentation uh, that, that it is in front of you. You should not bounce back and forth, go top, out, down, or uh, in, a, in a direction that you are not expecting. And one thing I would like to mention about the shortcut keys, and that is uh, the, one of the really biggest problems that I am dealing these days with, is uh, some people, some applications, including you know, Microsoft application, they are offering sometimes hundreds of shortcut keys, and then these shortcut keys do not, are not considered as accessibility solution. Shortcut keys are good as long as they are a handful, they are meaningful, um, and they are consistent. So if you look, for example, maybe say application that I am uh, mastering these days is uh, Microsoft Teams, and you will be surprised how many of uh, the shortcut keys they have because they, they fail to provide a, 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 a consistent navigation within the application. So they came up with the shortcut keys. Sometimes you have to control shift something, control alt something, and sometimes alt shifts, uh, and it is, it's a mess. So we do not consider shortcut keys as accessibility solutions. So when we get there, uh, for the next thing that we look for the ARIA landmark. For those of you who are not ARIA landmark or not familiar with that, we use uh, ARIA landmark or a mechanism to provide a kind of a semantic uh, uh, meaning to different regions. So in other words, when you look at a page, you can easily see uh, how the page is uh, constructed, how the uh, you know, or application is uh, constructed. For example, you see some banner or a banner, you see some navigation bars or sidebars, or footer and, and so on. And Landmark provide that mechanism for us so we can see that uh, this page consists of uh, five things, five major component, and then we can easily navigate to it. We might not be able to tell you what to say where they are, but we can see that at least the major components. So, uh, so in, in, uh, uh, there are, the, we want to make sure that uh, every element is uh, residing in one of these uh, regions. 
And then the regions have meaningful names and labels. And then the, the next thing that we check is the content. Uh, we check for the content structure. So we separate application or website, infrastructure or uh, uh, framework from the content. So um, we, uh, the, one of the first thing that we look in the content structure is the heading. So we'll make sure that, that the, the page or the content section of the page has a proper heading and they are meaningful. They are logical and hierarchical and they are complete. It means that they offer headings to all major sections. So practically all the headings, the list of the heading should give you an outline of the content on the page. So there are some other stuff that can go with the structure uh, for the order for the content. It's a grouping of element. If you see rela related items, you want to see them in a group or as a list. They can be uh, all grouped as a or order or unordered or definition list. Graphics, so all meaningful, uh, all uh, uh, we call that informational graphic. In a graphic that provides some uh, some uh, information that you think it is useful to the audience, they need proper. Uh, 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 the, 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 the text or description, so a screen reader know that what is the purpose of that graphic. Forms are getting a little, get a little, of, uh, you know, more complex uh, because of the form we are interacting with the page or with the elements there. So this, for the simple thing, or simple form element, we said that all form elements regarding their button, input text. Combo box, checkbox, radio group, and so on. They should have meaningful uh, uh, label, and this is a very, very well defined uh, best practices how to do it. Um, when we get to the more complex widgets, uh, for example, for the, the complex widget like. Uh, uh, expand, collapse, uh, carousel, or menu, uh, it, it requires a little more in-depth knowledge about that. And you need to know that how to interact, for example, with menu, and what you know should be expect when you get into a disclosure or expand collapsible element, or how a carousel should behave. And then, uh, uh, you know, the purpose of the form is that, you know, you collect some data and then you submit that. But uh, during that process, it is very possible that you run into some warning, some error, some requirement that you have to know. Uh, oh, the, for some time, you know, format, for example, you are entering the date. All this stuff must be, uh, you know, communicated in a kind of accessible way to all users. And then during that process, when you submit that, the system should be able to deliver any error message or any warning, or if it has been successful, an a, 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 what they call a verification notification or verification uh, announcement, something that uh, people can see and hear and read or whatever. So I am not going to discuss about the accessibility of maybe screen reader in Unix or Linux system, but for Windows or what the screen reader we have, the one Windows we have uh, the traditional uh, screen reader in North America is JAWS followed by NVDA and then Narrator. Um, JAWS is a commercial one, NVDA is pretty free and the Narrator is a built-in screen reader from Microsoft. Uh, until a couple of years ago, it was practically a toy, a useless thing. But uh, in the past years, they spent, uh, invested a lot of resources to it. 
So uh, I think it is coming along and then becoming uh, is getting slowly to become a sophisticated screen reader program. In Mac, the major screen reader is voiceover. It comes with Mac and it is beautiful. You know that the user doesn't have to pay extra for that. Android, uh, we have a TalkBack, and there is another system that I don't remember. Uh, and then uh, here is the statistic of the screen reader usage. Uh, I checked that this morning. Uh, the, this this the result is from last June, yeah, June of last year. Uh, as we uh, go uh, move forward, we see that. The NVDA, which is a free screen reader, is getting bigger portion of the market. So, and JAWS, which is a tra traditional screen reader, is losing the market a little bit to a voiceover and NVDA. So, we will be sharing these uh, uh, slides with you, and you will have access to all the data here. Oh man, how much I emphasize that you should not start with the screen reader testing unless <laughs> if you know what you are doing that. So, so remember the screen reader are made for a screen reader and for end user and they offer hundreds, if not really, maybe I, this is a, several hundred uh, functions to help a screen reader user with the, uh, uh, you know, to operate, uh, uh, to, to, uh, to be able to interact uh, or read um, the, the information. So some screen reader like JAWS, they have some algorithm to guess for the lack of the accessibility uh, the features. And JAWS is one of them. So, uh, the, the, so I, uh, and this is another red flag why I said that you should not use a screen reader for testing because you get a lot, a lot of wrong results. Uh, NVDA tries to stay within the spec and then they do not usually provide uh, information that, or they don't do guessing. So their result is more reliable. Now here we would like to make an announcement next month on May, if I'm not mistaken, May 19, we will have our Global Accessibility Awareness Day. And like previous years, we will be offering a series of events um, and, and workshop. And then I invite you to join us. A part of the uh, Global Accessibility events that we are organizing um, is an introduction of the basic accessibility testing tools that you, or everyone, regardless you are a developer or end user can do and get some information about the technical accessibility problems. And then we would like to offer also a workshop into how to use a screen reader for accessibility. I call that checking, not really testing, how we can check for accessibility feature using a screen reader. So the announcement will be sent to uh, the, the usual uh, list, including accessible web liaison and UW and, and front dev. Watch for your for watch the announcement. Okay, now we get to the screen reader, how it works. So let me explain to you. When you get to when you are using a screen reader, so you do not. Yes, you can. <laughs> it is free. I got the text message uh, uh, or the chat. Uh, it was piped in. I, he I heard that. But uh, when you are a screen reader user, you do not see the entire page at, at once. You see only one piece of the information at the time. So, for example, you see uh, the logo. Uh, of course, not the old logo itself. The alt text that goes with that. Uh, uh, with the logo, you can see one heading, you can see one graphic, or you can see one uh, uh, list item, you can see um, 
uh, a data cell, you can see a form control, a button or everything, but just one at the time, you do not see the relationship between these items. So, but beyond this jungle, there will be difficulty that you see, um, if you use, um, provide a structure, you know, HTML or, R, or properly, you can provide the structure. So I can see, for example, a specific data cell with, with, with their column header, corresponding column header and row header. So again, you can see one data cell and then uh, if the table is made properly, so you can see the column header and row header. Or when you are in a form control, so you see just a place for the, for example, edit box, but you can see what this edit box is programmatically related or connected to the label, or the adjacent label. So, um, how do we do it? You know, if we uh, see only one element, so we have to just tab, press tab key to go from one, one focusable element to another focusable element. If we did that, so we wouldn't be able to see the regular text. We wouldn't be able to see any other non-focusable element. So that's why it's clearly. Hadi, this is Anna Marie. You're at half past the hour. Thank you. So that's why the, the screen reader need uh, a mechanism to discover the page. So different screen reader use different terminology. Um, the terminology that we will be using here, we call that browse mode or reading mode. So what, what browse mode or reading mode is that it is a mode that the screen reader gives you a kind of virtual view of your page in that view, you see everything. You see the uh, focusable and non-focusable elements with all their associated labels. This is the, the, the format, or this is the mode that we usually use to discover a new page, to see that, hey, what, what is the page? If you take me to a random page, I have no idea, I mean, how big is the page? Is it just two paragraphs or 200 paragraphs? It is, you know, what, what does it contain? Does it have any form element or how many forms does it have? And, and you, can, you can imagine how complicated it, it is. But using these, uh, uh, these features, uh, screen reader features or virtual view, I am, in a, I am able to discover this page. So when we get to the uh, live demo, I will show you, for example, where I can tell you what are the major component of this page? Because the screen reader, they see from the DOM, I mean, document object model or behind the scene. And then it tells me, hey, these are the major component or these are the heading of this page. So, and, uh, you know, using all these features, they help me to understand you know, almost you know, what, how the page is constructed and what is the content. And then uh, the beauty of that is that that I can also navigate to that. So in, in summary, I mean, if you don't understand, don't worry. We will be covering that <laughs> in, in comprehensively in, a, in that, uh, that workshop. But that is a, one of the most complicated con concept of the screen reader. So reading mode or browse mode versus you know, interactive mode. Uh, I just mentioned that interactive mode. In a browse mode, I am just in a reading mode. I'm just read, I read and discover the page. But if I want uh, to interact with it, uh, then I have to switch the mode and go into an interactive mode. Uh, one thing that I um, forgot to mention that when I am in a browse mode, in a reading mode, anything that I type, the screen reader will capture it as a command. For example, you know, when, when I am here, here on this page, if I type letter H, letter H is never passed to my PowerPoint application. So it is screen reader captures that and interprets that as a command, as if 
I mean, the command is, you know, go and find the next heading for me. Um, but consider if I have in this page or any, any, any uh, web page, if I had a text box where I needed to enter my name, which also starts with H. So uh, in order to be able to type it, so I need to tell the screen reader, hey, switch or uh, turn off this, you know, turn off the browse mode or reading mode. And now after that, the screen reader just passes everything back to the application. So when I type H, so the H goes into the edit box. So again, if you don't understand that, don't worry, it is really complex. And then, uh, uh, but, uh, and, and I don't think that you need to know all this stuff. So I think I, I think I, I briefly talked about all this stuff on this page. You know, we can tap to go to the next link. Uh, we can, uh, you know, uh, identify, for example, I can tell, hey, go and find the next radio button for me. It finds that. Oh, there are all separate commands for these navigation commands. Uh, I can go to tell the, hey, go to the next edit box or um, go to the next heading I mentioned that, or go find the next graphic and, and so on. We will show them. So can we use it? Yes. <laughs> can we use a main screen reader for testing or checking? But, but remember always that this is not designed for accessibility testing. And then the best way that I can say that you can verify an issue, but not determine issue. And then you cannot do that for keyboard operability at all because screen reader offer a separate functionality that, uh, that uh, if you are not using a screen reader, you might not be, you might not be able to do it. One thing that I need to mention that when you read it in the, in the, in the documentation, if somebody says that, oh, we are JAWS compatible or something, that image, JAWS accessibility stuff, we do not have such a stuff, there's just garbage. So bottom line, do not use it unless you know what you're doing. So this is kind of, I think, redundant. I, I'm telling you that use those uh, accessibility tools. And then note that their uh, accessibility tools can catch, I guess, well, my, my guess, up to maybe 30% of the uh, issues. And then there are a lot of issues that you have to do that the manual checking or, uh, or testing. And then this is some recommendation we have, you know, if you run into some accessibility issues, you know, some, some developer might not know that, be polite and friendly, uh, and then, you know, contact them and then refer them to the right resources or engage them at least in that conversation. So here in the next three slides, I am offering, I'm such, giving a very basic commands of screen reader and VDA. I didn't have the voice over here. Uh, we don't need to go through that. You will receive the, uh, you know, the, the slides and you will see them. Uh, there are basic commands, you know, how to get to the next uh, heading, how to get to the next graphic, how to show the landmark, uh, how to shut up the screen reader <laughs> that it doesn't talk. And then, so it is something that you can study that offline. Now let's go into testing. Some of you might have seen this page. So Terriol has created uh, two identical, almost identical page. One of them is, I call that fully inaccessible. Another one is fully accessible. They look very, I mean, identical or almost identical. Visually, you cannot say that, but uh, from uh, one of them, uh, this version, whether you have is uh, accessible version. I think 
uh, I don't want to waste uh, your time by showing the inaccessible version that looks exactly like this because I can't do anything. I can just read from top to bottom, but I cannot interact with any of those elements. I cannot even understand how the page is constructed. But while I'm here, and I would like to show some of those features that I talked about uh, in action. So, so note that when, when we come to a page, uh, we as a screen reader user like you, the first thing that we get is just an overall view of the page. Of, I call that application framework or uh, you know page framework. Um, and then uh, that is what you know are your landmark. Uh, is for. So I am asking my screen reader to tell me what, uh, what are the major component or what are the major landmark of this page. That is a screen reader command. So it is, it is in the list of the stuff that I, it is in the presentation. So it tells me we have a banner region. We have a main menu, a type of navigation region. Main is really main region. And this is a form region. And this is a content info, which is a, I think, a ugly name for footer. So I need to emphasize, or need to um, uh, maybe uh, add that are the, uh, uh, there are seven predefined regions. Uh, one of them is banner. Navigation is the next one. And then we have form. We have, uh, we have main, which is designed for to, uh, the, the, the main content information. There is a footer or content info, or complementary. It, uh, we have, uh, I guess, search and a few more, a couple of more. But, uh, but these are what you see that are the major things that are used. So again, I cannot tell you where the banner is. I can guess where it is, usually at the top. But I cannot tell you, for example, how this main menu region is arranged, unless maybe I go and then explore it. I cannot say that main is on the left side or right side, I'm very likely on the right side. And the form, I cannot tell you where it is, but I know that somewhere past the main region and content information, so I assume it is the bottom. So some people like myself who has been visual for a big part of my life, it is important for me to know that have a kind of visual relationship with this stuff. Okay, so I decide to uh, uh, go to main. So the beauty of providing these features is that when you have, uh, you know, it, it, they not only provide um, information about the region uh, or how the page is constructed, it helps me also to navigate to the desired region as, as I want. So now I, my focus is right at the beginning of that region. And then, uh, oh, I need to unshare my screen and share it. And so you can hear the screen reader, okay? I'm sorry. Um, hold on. Media controls. Am I sharing? Accessible university demo site, accessible version Google Chrome. You guys hear my screen reader? Yeah. Yep. Yes. Okay, that's good. Cool. I we tested earlier, so I, we changed the volume, so it is not an annoying level. So let me escape. go back here. Select the voice profile guide. I... Escape, escape. Zoom meeting. Accessible university demo site, accessible version Google Chrome. Accessible oh, university demo site. Shortcut keys I have to remember. Document regions dialog, regions preview main. So that is the page that I was. So as you see that, this is a, we call it a banner. Main menu navigation. Main menu navigation. Main. Main, apply now, form. And apply now, form, content information. and content information. So again, main. I click on here on main. Enter. So I need to, if Dan was here, he would remind me, slow down. Slower, 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 slower. 
Virtual to PC accessible university virtual PC accessible okay. university. Now the next step. So now I know that the major component. But now I want to say, what is the content? How about the content? I uh, press another shortcut key. Heading list dialog. Headings list view. Accessible university one. one and page. it lists for me the, uh, the the headings used on this page. So what you see is a heading, and the, what you see on the right it is the heading level. For example, the first heading that I am on is the heading level one. Which is good. So it's again the, the heading one should be used for the as as a main heading for the page. Featured story slideshow two. Featured story is two. No, that shows. I mean, this numbering, this uh, hierarchy, hierarchy, they provide. They give me the relationship between these uh, headings. Welcome to. Welcome is two. Bienvenido two. Bienvenido two. Can you spot the barriers two? Another heading two. AU enrollment trends two. Apply now two. Security question three. Now we see the security question number three. It tells me logically that Hi, this is Anna Marie. We're at three forty-five. Thank you. This shows me that is part of apply now two. Apply no now section. So that is where we emphasize, you know, the hierarchy. So hierarchy is a, a key in, in, in providing heading. Apply now. Too. So if I want to go, for example, to hey, can you spot the bear? Bienvenido too. This section, which sounds Spanish. Enter heading level two. Bienvenido. As you notice that. I go back again. This section of the page suggests that AU may be a welcoming institution. The inaccessible design of this page sends the opposite message. So I am going now to that that heading. Heading level two. Bienvenido. As you see that it switched to the to Spanish. There's voice automatically. I didn't do anything. But the key is that behind the scene, uh, somebody in this case in Ontario made the proper language transition. So here, this text that we are entering is in Spanish. So the screen reader automatically switches to that language is, if it, it is available to the Accessible Universidad UA es una universidad ficticia y esta es su página de ficción. Esta página está diseñada para... And so on. So, <laughs> okay, okay. Now, I told you that uh, we check for the, uh, for, for keyword accessibility. And then I would like to check the main keyboard, main, main uh, the, the heading, uh, the main navigation Document section. Regions dialog, region, main menu navigation. So I am navigating to the main menu Enter. region. And show menu keyboard shortcuts button, about menu, sub menu, collapse menu. Enter menu news one of four. So Escape, about one of if four. you see, I am just, as you say, I'm using my hand. I'm doing that with the keyboard. Academics two of four. So I'm using, I uh, press right arrow key to go to, to the, uh, next uh, menu, and then I press arrow down. Three programs, one of distance learning, three or four libraries, and four I press four. escape key. Escape academics, two or four. It closes that. Admissions, three or four. And admission, and then I press arrow down. And this is the only option, I guess. Aid, four and four. Escape. escape admissions, three or four. Visitors, four or four. And it tells me, as you've probably heard that here, Admission. visitors, four or four. It even tells me that is a, a menu item four of four. Uh, but uh, and we know that they have some options here. But if I wrote down events one of three, it said that events one of three. It even tells me there are so many. There are three sub options. So escape visitors. Four these four. are uh, some of that. So let me see that about the I showed you about the picture or, or graphics. Escape, leaving menus, accessible um, escape. Select the graphic dialog. I am bringing up the list of the graphics. Robot with a friendly face assembled with various scraps of hardware and mounted on an old desktop speech synthesizer. And I want to tell you that writing a good alt text is an art. So uh, that, that, that there is some, some practice that we need to do that to master that. Creative Commons license. Ro accessible University. Okay, Robot with a so on, with if I want to go, for example, to, oh, uh, to escape, escape. For example, a table. There is a table that you probably see that. I hope it is in your port, viewing port. 2007 AU enrollment trends. 2000 CS row two total 84. 2007 uh, Can user? Can you see the 
the table in its entirety or just a portion? Yeah, now we see it all. Yeah, that is great. So you, you can see the table. I wait for a second so you can familiarize your table. So I think it shows that the enrollment, the student enrollment for 2000, 2000, for two years, and then it uh, some factors, you know, that uh, the, the, the has been uh, recorded here. But let's uh, the browse together. Um, to total. Land, row two. Total, row three. I'm I said the total. 2,700 84, column two. Did you hear that? That's, that's CS? 2,700 126, column Eng. three. This is... Uh, uh, the, 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 um, I think the major. 2708 Eco, 43, column 4. Eco is the economy. 2708 32, column 5. 2708 32, column 5. What is this one? I didn't get that. <laughs> 2708 Sci, 112, column 6. Okay. 2708 Spa, 59, column 7. Uh, 2808 CS, 82, column 8. Oh, this, this one was CS, yes, but the other one was here. Yeah. So, but, but when I go to the, for example, how many males? Percent mail, row four. Percent mail. 2,700 CS, 89, column two. So he said that 89, but it read the inform related information about. 2,700 and 84, column three. And 84%. And if I go find down. Percent female, row five. Percent female. 2,700 CS, 11, column two. I, I hope the statistic has changed. It's not that bad. I mean, it sounds like. When I was a computer science, I mean, a student many years back, when this was from last century. <laughs> but hopefully the statistic has changed. Um, 350 PM. 350. I can show you a lot of stuff with the screen reader, how it works. Uh, I, I can show maybe the phone control. Name required edit required invalid entry. It, uh, did you, uh, I repeat that? Name required edit required invalid entry. It said that name required field invalid because there is no data here so enter apply now form region name required edit required invalid entry i type hadi hadi email required edit required invalid entry a a land, land. Yeah, but you hear that it tells that header at uh required it's required edu city edit as pop-up seattle seattle state slash province edit as pop-up wow zip slash postal code edit as pop-up is it nine eight one five five? No, then I don't know what. I would never for nine five one five five. I guess ninety eight thousand nine hundred fifty five. Country edit as pop up. Auto fill this box expanded. United States Audi Rangin one to four. Accessible university demo site accessible version to virtual. If a cow is purple, what color is it? Edit required invalid entry. <laughs> Enter. If a cow if a cow is purple, what color is it? Edit required invalid entry. <laughs> I went to the. I make a mistake. Great. Submit button. <laughs> now. Now see that with the submit. Enter alert. Thank you. Thank you. Your application has been received. Submit. Submit checkbox not checked. Five regions, nine headings, and seven links. So you hear the confirmation. And the confirmation is really is essential for uh, when we are interacting with form. So we want that for uh, successful uh, submission. We get the confirmation so user know what's happening. So you probably have seen in some of the transactions that we do online, you submit the form and you have no idea did you go through or it crashed or what what happened or you really everyone thank you so much okay that is the so far i wanted to share I mean, again more uh, about it when we get to uh, uh, the, the promise workshop for global accessibility awareness day so now we can open the floor for questions who is the voice of chat today Hi, Hadi, it's Anna Marie. Okay. So if you want, you prefer to open your microphone, and ask question, feel free to do it. But you can also ask via chat. We do have a couple of comments I'd like to share with you. Really great to see here this in action. Thank you. Thank you so much. I have to dash, but this has been great. I look forward to the workshops next month. You. Thank you. Question. So if anyone has a question for Hadi, feel free to unmute yourself to ask your question.
did, did you say you'd advertise those workshops? It will be coming, uh, we'll be, be posting that soon. So we are, uh, I guess, working on the uh, registration page. Okay, thank you. I, I, I assume you early next week, you will be seeing in your mail pass. Great, awesome, thank you. And that workshop, we will be also covering Mac, a voiceover, Mac voiceover. No, no how, do you, how do you use a tarot? I'm um, not, not seeing any other questions at the moment, but I just wanted to uh, comment or discuss the, um, the table. It has the column headers and, and that all has good table markup, right? You're able to navigate through the columns and rows and it was reading those column headers, but it was reading them kind of cryptically. So they're all acronyms and, you know, and you sort of got stumped on, on uh, phi and psi and spa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and okay. those actually have abbreviation, HTML abbreviation tags um, that do spell out what they, From accessible technology um, they, to everyone. Yeah, what of accessibility the full, accessible full version, you know, beyond the acronym, what, what it actually stands for. And, uh, I think that's a setting within JAWS that you have to enable to get that to read aloud. But even when you have that enabled, what I've discovered in JAWS is that when you're reading uh, the column directly, it will spell those out and read them. But when you're in table mode and, and it's announcing the column headers, um, it does not. So even if they're, if they're coded and you have uh, acronym, abbreviation, expansion enabled, it still is not going to read those uh, when you're navigating you know, uh, as column headers. So I think, I don't know if that's a feature or a bug, but just an F FYI. Yeah, thank you. Now, I think that is the reason many years ago I decided to turn off the abbreviation. So otherwise, because when it is, it does that, then, uh, then uh, I cannot do that the proper testing because I do not know if they have spelled it out or it is a result of uh, uh, the, or, or, or not. So, uh, and then as you mentioned, the screen reader are not always handling them uh, in the same so way. Jaws has decided to, to spread it out, but, uh, but I consider it as a bug. Right? Some people might say that as a feature. So if somebody does that, put there, so this is for the purpose to, to spell it out. Um, if somebody like me decides to turn it off, then I can turn it off, but they should not decide for me that if I need it or not. These are the sorts of issues that, uh, that we encounter and why um, Hadi had all those cautionary notes about you know, testing with a screen reader. Because it, it is often you'll, you know, you'll hear something um, and you're not sure you know, if, if it's because you coded something improperly um, you know, or what, what's going on there. And so having that, you know, an insider's knowledge as to how your know, different screen readers work, what different settings are, there are hundreds of settings within JAWS and almost as many within NVDA. Um, and, you know, it, there's really no substitute for, for having, you know, an, an actual user, somebody like Hadi who, um, you know, uses this tool every day. Um, there are, you know, those of us who don't use it every day on an ongoing basis can learn a few keystrokes that can kind of help give us a sense for what a screen reader, you know, might read this page like, but, um, but it's not, you know, not the same experience. Again, we are uh, PM. out to two minutes for the top of that. And then last, last minute uh, for questions. Uh, It usually doesn't happen that I finish <laughs> within the, the time. Go usually over time. That but was Anna Marie you. keep keeping you on track. Okay, yeah, exactly. But thank you, thank, thank you everyone for coming. Um, uh, hopefully, you found the this this presentation or give you some idea about accessibility testing. Uh, the video with screen reader. Uh, let me use accessibility. Very to everyone. Thank you, checking. <laughs>
uh, I, I am afraid to say that testing because we are really not testing. We are just checking, you know, how screen reader handles that. But uh, talk to you next time. We'll see you Thank next you. time in the seminar uh, webinar and enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you.